This is the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk on every team in the NHL. And the Norris Trophy goes to Mark Giordano. Jerome McGinley's mom, 500 goals. Up the center and coming in is Lule. He was like center net. Murray gets it again. That's the shot by scores. Wait, what is this? A new Calgary Flames podcast? Really? It is. It's a new Calgary Flames podcast coming out for the 2019-2020 NHL season. The podcast name Flames Unfiltered. I am the host of the show, Brad Brood from Inside Edge Hockey News. And this is a podcast I'm super excited to do. Uh, I'm a huge Calgary Flames fan and been wanting to do this for a long time. This podcast will be featured on the Hockey Podcast Network. So what's the Hockey Podcast Network? Well, it's an NHL podcast platform that features weekly podcasts from every NHL team. You'll also find Flames Unfiltered on Inside Edge Hockey News. The podcast will come out twice a week. You'll find it on all of the podcast players. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeart, YouTube, Spreaker. Man, we're going to be every everywhere. We look forward to all the new listeners, all the Calgary Flames fans around all of Canada, in Calgary, in the United States. They're everywhere. Last year was a great year. Boy, wouldn't it be great to have another year like last year only? Better results in the playoffs. Yes, we want better results in the playoffs. We'll talk about the good and we'll talk about the bad. This all premieres October 1st on the Hockey Podcast Network. And Inside Edge Hockey News will feature new episodes every Monday and every Thursday. NHL News, Opinions and Controversy. Let's talk a little bit about this podcast and give you a little idea of what it's going to be all about. And then we'll roll into some of the off-season news, give you a little bit of flames talk to get you going in this summer. And then we're going to talk a little bit of expectations to wrap up this podcast. I am the host, Brad Brood. I grew up a hockey fan. And you know what I liked the most growing up was I liked playing and I played quite a bit of hockey and actually did in my twenties did a lot more playing of hockey and senior men's teams and going all over the place playing hockey. But I was kind of a stat nerd. I was kind of a stat freak. I loved, you know, figuring out, you know, who's, whether it was baseball or shoot any sport, really. I, I just, I loved the numbers part of it. I wouldn't consider myself a huge analytics guy because I think there's more to hockey than just the analytics, but I am. A, I'm a stats freak. I love looking at the numbers. I love looking at trends that you're going to see from players and stuff like that. But I grew up in a family. I'm from North Dakota. Yep, we're right on the Canadian border. So Calgary is actually, it's, you know, it's about tied for the third closest home team to me. Uh, Winnipeg being the closest. I'm just four hours away from the great old city of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I love Winnipeg. It's so fun to go there probably sorry flames fans don't get mad at me here but probably the best atmosphere of any rink that you're going to find it's that good it is just that that good a little bit more about myself and a family three great kids i have a beautiful wife and i have a day job i i am a regional manager for a floor covering company and i also run inside edge hockey news and let's talk a little bit about that. I've been doing that since 2010. It started as just a hobby and has grown into way more than a hobby. It's uh, it's my second full-time job, but I love it because it is hockey. Started as a blog, 
Uh, went to numerous NHL events, cr- credential NHL member, been to the award show, been to some of the other bigger events. Um, great opportunities to meet some some super, super good players um, and other media members. I, and that's the, that's the best part about this. Three years ago, actually, yeah, this will be the third year I, I ventured into podcasts. I figured, you know what? I think I'm a better talker than I am a writer. And I, and I, I still do some writing. Um, I started off my first, first podcast with a, with a good friend of mine and partner, Blake Friars, with a podcast called The Debate Hockey Podcast. We're rolling into season three. Two weeks from now, we will be recording our 71st episode, and it is a blast of a podcast to do. I also do another podcast called The Instigator, which is a short rant. Uh, comes out twice a month, and it just kind of talks about you know current happenings in the league that honestly have got me pissed off and got me thinking. I also love rankings. I said I was a stats guy, and I love doing rankings and 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 talking you know who's better than who and arguing and and visiting with with other hockey fans. I think that's what's great about hockey, not just on the ice, but the friends and the family that hockey is off the ice. Uh, the hockey world is a big, big world, but it's also a really tight, close knit and, uh, so much of my life and so many friends and, and great acquaintances have come through the sport of hockey. And, um, my best friends today are, are, were met through the sport of hockey. Why? I'm sure you're wondering, am I a flames fan? Well, <laughs> it happened back in 84, 1984. I was 12 years old. Now I know everybody can do the math. I don't care. I'm <laughs> I'm getting older, but I'm not that old. But 84, I was playing hockey. I was at a hockey store in, in Minot, North Dakota. It wasn't many of them. Minot's not the biggest town. It's about 45,000, 50,000 now. Um, back then, we had two places to buy hockey equipment. One of them, the one we were at this day, was kind of your non-traditional place to buy hockey equipment it was a home of economy which is basically kind of a tractor supply type store but they sell hockey equipment there because because we're in north dakota that's why so this is how this you're probably wondering with this story how in the world does this relate to calgary flames well this is how i became a calgary flames fan while i was in the store i was picking out a new stick i said to my dad hey can I get a hockey jersey? He looked at me and he said, no. I said, well, geez, come on, dad. Can I get a hockey jersey? And he's looked around for a minute and he smiled at me. He said, yeah, you know what? You can, you can do it. You got to get it off this rack though. Of course it was a clearance rack. I still remember it as twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> I wish we could get hockey jerseys for twenty nine ninety nine, but back then you could. The rack, I still remember the teams on it. It had the Minnesota North Stars, God, you know, which would have been the easy pick for me. It's the second closest team. It's in the neighboring state, and, and that would have been the easiest pick. Plus, I love the green and gold. The old jerseys, boy, were they nice. Edmonton Oilers were on there. Didn't pick that. Probably another easy pick was in the heyday of Wayne Gretzky. I don't know why that would be in the clearance rack, but it was. That's just the way it was back then. Quebec Nordiques were on there. Cool jersey. I didn't really consider that one. I also found the next one, and it was a white Calgary Flames home jersey at the time because they wore white at home, which I wish they still did. I picked that jersey up. I thought about it. Put it back. I looked at the Minnesota North Stars one. Thought about it a little longer, and I thought, you know what? I don't want to be like everybody else in this area. I want to be different. I don't want to be Quebec Nordiques different, but I want to be Calgary Flames different. Little did I know that just two years later, they would contend for the cup, and that really sparked my interest. And then in 89, as I was a sophomore in high school, they hoisted Lord Stanley, and that was it. I was gone, man. I was a Theo Fleury fan, and Al McInnes fan, and I was locked in. And from that date, I followed the Calgary Flames some years more than other years, but pretty much daily. For the last 12, 15 years, it's been (laughs) 
more than daily. I, I followed them very, very closely. Odd story on why I'm a Calgary Flames fan, but that's why I'm a Calgary Flames fan. I try to make numerous trips to Calgary every year, at least if not so many to Calgary. I try to get onto a couple of their road games every year and, and go to as much hockey as I can. I already got trips planned already for this year, heading to Vegas to watch the Flames play the Golden Knights in October. Really looking forward to that. I love junior hockey. I just love the sport of hockey. You'll find that I'm opinionated. You'll agree with me some days. You'll probably get mad at me on others. But I tell it like it is. I'll tell you when I think a player's doing good. And I'll also tell you when I think a player's doing bad. It's part of the game. Not everybody's going to have great days. And I'll tell it like it is. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you tune in and hopefully you enjoy the podcast. Every team, everywhere. The Hawk Podcast Network. Let's talk Flames off season this year. We'll roll through it pretty quick. We try to keep our episodes between 30 and 45 minutes. Some nights I might stretch that if I get really wild after a, a terrible loss. Some nights I might hit it that long after a wonderful win. We'll also have fan interaction on the show this year. We always want fans to tell us what they think and you know, interact with the show. All right, off-season news. Talbot signs, one year, 2.75 million. We already got Riddich signed, two year, 2.75. Also, same contract, just one year longer. I like this contract. I know a lot of Flames fans maybe kind of looked at it as, I don't know, is this the right move? I thought it was a great move. I really did. I think this is a really good move for the Flames. Because what this gives us, and we're living in a day and age where you just can't have one goalie that just stands in every night and does it. This is an age where you're going to need a 1A and 1B. It just is. We've got two guys that have potential to be great go- great goalies, and we got them at 2.75. How do you go wrong? I don't know who will be the starter this year. I think we're going to see a lot of equal action. I really do. And I think it's going to be whoever stands up. I think Talbot's poised for a comeback. I really do. And I think we're going to know more about this one by Christmas. Now the hottest news of the offseason, Neil Ferlucic trade with the arch-rival Edmonton Oilers. I was pissed off when I heard this. Pissed off. But you know what? The more it's sunk in, the more I've thought about it, the more I think, oh, you know what? This is probably just the lesser of two evils. Yeah, Neil probably has more upside. But what was it going to be like bringing Neil back? He got a healthy scratch in the playoffs. It was evident he wasn't getting along with Peters. So do you want that relationship? Lucic, he's a big knucklehead. Now I can't really say that because he's on my team. You know what he will do, though? He will bring toughness. Everybody says it's out of the league now. Is it? That's the Blues. I think you still need to be tough. I think there still needs to be a fear factor. And I'm not saying it'll eliminate everything that Calgary has to deal with in that aspect. But you know what? It'll probably eliminate some of the whack and the hack in the Johnny Gaudreau takes. Maybe not. We'll see. I hope this works out. I don't, I mean, my hopes aren't that high. I mean, he's a third or fourth liner. Let's face it. He's not going to have the pressure on him that he had in Edmonton. And that's great news if you're Milan Lucic. Who knows? This might turn out in Calgary's favor. And this is coming from a guy that was irate. I was pissed off when I heard this. I don't know. It might not be so bad. We all thought the Neil deal was great last year. We were all jumping up and down, and look at how that turned out. Maybe a deal we think's crappy. Maybe that'll turn out. As for Sam Bennett, he re-signs two years, 2.75 Boy, what a bargain. I'm a huge Sam Bennett fan. Let's face it. He's one of the only guys that showed up in the playoffs last year. He got ripped on. He gets ripped on every single night on the Fan 960. Plus, big shout out to those guys. I listen to him every morning, every afternoon, and every night. Great, great, great Flames coverage. They didn't really rip on Bennett last year. I should rephrase that. 
the listeners, the call-ins ripped on Bennett. I think you better be careful. Really take a look at what Bennett brings to this team. And I think you're looking at a guy who, <laughs> who could see first-line minutes this year. He might. Valimaki's injury. Man, did this, this is a heartbreaker. This is, this is one that really got me. This one got me down in the dumps. I'm a huge Valimaki fan. I like it. I like the progression we've seen. And it stops and halts that progression that we've seen every, you know, he's just been growing as a player. And, oh, man, does this, this just hurts that. But he'll be back. And we're, we're still, you know, I mean, he's still, he's going to be a big part of this Calgary Flames organization. Hopefully he can get over this quick. He heals quick. He works hard. He's a young man who wants to prove himself. So I I think we're going to get an early return from Valimaki. What really is the killer on this is that this kills an entry-level contract. On a team that's just cash-strapped beyond belief, having him and his skill on an entry-level contract is like a bonus. And now we've lost that bonus. So that makes it a little bit more tricky, and that's probably the real bad situation of this whole deal. Last one we'll talk about before we move into expectations, and that's Matthew Kachuk. And this has been the news that we are going to get slammed with. We will be talking about this so much in the next, hopefully, four weeks before we get this figured out. But what's going to happen? Is he going to sign? How much is he going to sign for? What's he worth? What's the term going to be? If I had to bet on it, I think he gets 7.5. I think the term's really up in the air, but I think it'd probably be four or five years. Probably leaning more to the, I don't know, three years, three, four, five. I don't know, somewhere in there. I don't think it'll be longer than five. I don't think it'll be shorter than three. I do have bad news. I do think it's going to be a drug out into the regular season. I just do. I know he wants to play, and I know the Flames want him to play. Let's just hope they can get it figured out so that uh, so that he is playing and is being a menace out there. Now, as for the people who think he's going to get $9 million, I mean, I think Kachuk is a great hockey player. He's, going to, he's critical to the f- success of the Flames. But has he proven himself over the span of a year to deserve in the $9 million range? I don't think so. I think Matthew Kachuk can be amazing, but I think he needs to not whine so much maybe. Maybe whining is not the term. Complain so much and just get in there and do what he's out there to do, and that's aggravate teams and create those goals in front of the net. His presence in front of the net and down low is amazing. He's not the greatest skater you're going to see out there, but the guy figures a way to get it out, get it, get the most out of a situation. It's critical the Flames get him. I don't think he's proven himself to be a nine million dollar guy yet. Will he be? Probably. His upside's huge. I think I get it done in the seven range, seven five range. I just. The bad news is I, I'm just afraid that this one might just get drug out. NHL news, opinions, and controversy. Expectations. Where do we go with expectations for this year in the Calgary Flames? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I think that the Calgary Flames are going to have a good year. But, you know, you look at last year in the regular season. Can it get any better? I don't think so. I mean, they are the hot, just a blazing, high-scoring team. Their defense was, honestly, I think, on paper, probably one of the best on the ice. Pretty good. You know, Brody had his struggles. I think we're a little too hard on, on Brody. I think our expectations were off the charts, and I don't think we've been real fair to him. But you got to think about, look at uh, the Rasmus Anderson Came into the picture. Hamannick. Hamannick's my favorite guy, man. Like, how do you go wrong? The guy guts it out every single night. Puck's going in the net left and right. We're getting goals from everybody. Lindholm's a huge surprise. How awesome is that? 
everybody's chipping in Gaudreau off the charts. Goal, 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 goal every single night. You know what else was great last year? We didn't have any injuries. No, hardly any critical injuries. And that doesn't get talked about like it should. The Flames just I've eluded the injury bug last year. That sure helped. Then the playoffs happened. Now, I don't think it can get much worse. Maybe <laughs> losing that first game. Now, I was wondering, you know, if we win game two in overtime, what does that change to the series? Think about that. 2-0 lead. Oof, that changes everything. But you know what? Games three, four, and five, the flames were soft. Extremely, extremely soft. The lackluster play. No flow. No goals. You couldn't stop Nathan McKinnon. And I'm not going to lie, I was irate with Johnny Gaudreau last year. His playoff performance had me fuming mad. It was just not, I mean, it was just not acceptable. You, you need to fight through things in the playoffs. You can't go out there and expect it to be like game seven of the regular season where you can float around and score. You score goals. Top five in the league. You're going to get hit. You're going to get chipped. You're going to get beat up, especially in the playoffs. Expect it. Expect it and deal with it. Don't whine about it. Fight through it and play the game you know how to play. He's a lot better than that. Now, expectations for this year. Well, are they going to be a playoff team? Yeah, I would say so. Definitely say so, to be honest with you. I don't think the regular season is going to be as good as last year, but how could it be? Like, what do we expect as Flames fans? Do we really expect it to be that good? I don't think so. I think that would be unfair to think that it's going to go that good. We're going to battle with the Golden Knights and the Sharks for the lead in the division in my mind. I don't think we're going to win the Pacific. I think we'll fall in that second or third. But who knows? Maybe that's a blessing. Maybe that's just what the doctor ordered. You know, maybe you don't want to go in as a marked man in the playoffs like the Flames did last year. A lot of people actually picked Colorado to beat Calgary, and Calgary was a Western Conference champion. Maybe it's maybe it's a blessing if we don't win. I don't know. I'll probably change my tune midseason if we're in first place. <laughs> it's usually the way that goes when you're a Flames fan, right? Or any team's fan. I think we need to learn from last year's regular six season regular season success. But most of all, we need to learn from our playoff disaster. We need to learn that playoff hockey is different. Than regular season hockey. Now, what will make it a good season? What does the flame? What do the flames have to do to be successful next year? I think there's three important things, and I touched on I think all three of them earlier on in the podcast. The first one, I think Johnny Gaudreau needs to decide that whining isn't getting him anywhere. He needs. To decide to play like a man and fight through some adversity. Now, please don't think that I'm a Johnny Gaudreau hater. This is the first podcast and I don't really want everybody to think that I'm being very critical of him, but deservedly. So I don't think there was too many flames fans that at the end of the playoffs were like, Oh, I feel bad for Johnny Gaudreau. He tried his hardest. Did anybody feel that way? No. And he probably doesn't even feel that way. So I hope we see him fight through that adversity. Goaltending. We need it to be average or above average this year. I'm not sure which one is going to emerge. Is it going to be Talbot? Is it going to be Riddick? 
I'm a huge fan of Riddick. I am. I, I, I liked him a lot last year. I thought he was very, very good. I really, really did think he was good. And I would have been perfectly fine if they had went with him in the playoffs. But you know what? I don't blame Peters. He wasn't at his peak at that point in time. And in hindsight, Smith was lights out in the playoffs. So, like, how do you argue that? I think we're going to know by Christmas where this is going. I look for a huge Talbot rebound. Talbot has been stuck on teams in Edmonton that allow shot after shot after shot. I like Calgary's defense, even with some of the injuries that they've just taken on. I think Calgary's going to be good on the back end. I think Talbot's going to see less scoring chances, less prime scoring chances, less shots, and I think we're going to see a good season from Talbot. And you know what? I also wouldn't be shocked if Riddick stepped up and said, Haha, no, I'm taking this job and I'm running with it, and he puts up some great numbers. Another big key, staying injury-free. It was a huge part last year. This is something that scares the heck out of me. Because you know how hard it is to stay injury-free two seasons in a row? You're going to hear me, if you listen to this podcast, you're going to hear me talk about the hockey gods a lot. I believe in it. I watch things, I see things, and it's like, eh, hockey gods are going to get them back for that. I also think the hockey gods even things out. And that's partially why I think that Calgary is going to not win the Pacific this year. But I also think we're going to have to deal with some injury issues. I think we're going to have to fight through it. You know what's really critical with the injuries, though? Is when they happen and the timing that it happens. That's what's important. Well, I know one thing. This season is going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be Flames hockey. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Check back October 1st for the launch of Flames Unfiltered. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. And also make sure you check out our Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Check out host Brad Brood on Twitter at Brad Brood. And if you like what you hear, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can find Flames Unfiltered on all the major podcast players. And consider subscribing to Inside Edge Hockey News on Patreon. That'll get you exclusive content and much more. Thanks again and enjoy the hockey action. Thanks for listening to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. Flames fans, all kinds of excitement going on there. Over at the penalty box, Jim Boblisky and Tim Hunter not dressed tonight and going down McKinnis. They've got their sweat on and the Calgary Flames have won the Stanley Cup. We're the winners! We're the winners! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network on Twitter at HockeyPodNet. New episodes every Monday and Thursday. Download at the HockeyPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. This production is copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.